Hello guys, uh, welcome to Christian History Today. We're going to finish a lecture that we didn't quite get to finish uh, when we were still all together. Christianity in the Middle Ages. We mentioned very briefly that Charlemagne had helped to unify uh, much of Europe around his kingship. Um, he considered himself to be the head of this new Roman Empire. Um, but the joke is, of course, this new Holy Roman Empire is neither holy nor is it Roman. What the, uh, what the empire looked like was something like this. You can see on your, your screen, Charlemagne's empire wasn't all that large. Now let's talk about um, the Great Schism. And this, of course, will be kind of our parting of ways with Eastern Orthodoxy. And you might ask, why are we not really going to be talking about Eastern Orthodoxy much? Because, frankly, the Orthodox Church hasn't changed very much. It's the Western Church that has continued to um, experience change throughout the course of, of um, history, including in the second thousand years. The transfer going clear back to the time of Constantine of the capital from Rome to Constantinople inevitably brought some amount of jealousy between the two great sees, the Bishop of Constantinople and the Bishop in Rome. And this, of course, uh, continues to be exacerbated throughout the entire uh, first millennium. The West adopts Latin while the East continues to use Greek. Uh, the four major patriarchs in the East um, continue to remain in um, a strong fellowship with each other, while the Western bishop, the Bishop of Rome, um, kind of does his own thing. And this really comes to a head in the uh, year 1054 AD. There's a number of, of course, important influences as to why the Christian church splits in 1054. Uh, of course, there's communication difficulties, Latin versus Greek. You also have the fact that um, the, the claims of jurisdictions oftentimes um, overlapped. And so you have spots in uh, today where you look at places like Bulgaria and Albania, where you have uh, oftentimes um, some conflict there in terms of which of the, uh, the the popes had authority there, the Pope of Rome or the Pope of Constantinople. Uh, and then, of course, the claim of Pope Leo I in the 400s, that he was the successor of St. Peter and therefore would be considered the first among equals. Well, as time went on, the first was emphasized more and more, and equals was emphasized less and less. By the time we get to Pope Leo IX, um, he asserted that he had authority over the four major patriarchs of the East. That would be, of course, the patriarchs of Constantinople, Antioch, Jerusalem, and Alexandria. And then, of course, to add um, a, a, a further wedge between these two great um, groups of Christians, the Eastern Christians and the Western Christians, was the fact that the Western Christians added one small phrase to the Nicene Creed, the Filioque. Uh, as we are walking through the Nicene Creed and hopefully memorizing the Nicene Creed more and more, uh, you'll come to the point where in the third article, I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Catholic Church added, and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. The addition here of the filioque uh, is very upsetting for Eastern Christians because the Eastern Christians were saying you're basically changing the Trinity. The rest of the stuff is quoted directly out of Holy Scripture, and you can't change Holy Scripture. You can't change the Trinity. The Western Church uh, basically responded and said we're not changing anything. Um, look at the Athanasian Creed. We accept that. Uh, look at look at the, the the Creed itself. We're adding this in order to keep the Arian heresy in Spain from dominating the church. Well, ultimately, this is another major issue in the split. Now, the split does happen in 1054 AD, uh, but there's an attempt to reconcile the two great church bodies. Um, clear until we get to the Fourth Crusade, where, of course, if you remember anything about the Fourth Crusade, 
the uh, the Western Christians were promised forgiveness in their crusading, and no matter what they did, uh, promised a spot in heaven by the Pope. And so, of course, they went around raping and pillaging, and and then they sacked Constantinople, which wasn't pleasant for anyone in Constantinople. And the uh, great artifacts that were stolen and um, brought to the Western Church. So yeah, if you ever go to uh, Venice and you go to St. Mark's Cathedral there, you can look at all the the relics that they have, and all that stuff was uh, stolen from the East in the Fourth Crusade. So here we have it: the Great Schism formally divides the Eastern Church from the Western Church, and um, of course the bishops excommunicate each other. Now you might ask, well, what about today? Are the Eastern Church and the Western Church close to reunification? The answer is no, they're, they're really not. There is dialogue between the Eastern Church and the Western Church. The Eastern Church is actually also in the dialogue with the Coptic Church, uh, which has been out of communion with the Eastern Church um, for since, since 451. Um, and they're probably closer to reunifying uh, than is the, the Roman Church and the, the Eastern Churches. Um, that said, if you are a, a Roman Catholic and you have Eastern Orthodox brothers and sisters, you can invite them to your Catholic Church, and the Catholic Church recognizes today the Orthodox Communion as a legitimate communion and also invites the Eastern Orthodox Christians to take communion in the Roman Church. That has not been reciprocated. Um, the the uh, Eastern Church considers the Western Church to simply be west of Jesus, and so a full participation in the life of the church is not, um, it, it is not something that the Eastern Church extends to, to Roman Catholics without them converting to Orthodoxy first. All right, so there you have it. Next thing we're going to be talking about is how we get from here in 1054 to the Protestant Reformation. We'll be looking at the prelude to the Reformation. Until then, we'll see you uh, on the other side. Okay, that's all I have for you. We'll see you on the other side. Confound it. Where'd that go?